Hello friends, it's Carla here today. We're looking at a little bit of a different project, not paper today. We're gonna to be doing some stitching and I'm going to show you a new company that I found, So Sweet Pea. They have beautiful applique designs and the really cool thing about their patterns is that they come with an SVG file. They have all the information on their website, which I will link below, but I wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to put the SVG file into your Cricut design space so that you can quickly and easily cut it with your Maker or your Explorer. So I'm simply logging in. I have uh, ordered the files and downloaded them and here they are here. So I'm clicking on the one that I want, the flower garden applique. And then I'm simply going to uh, click on the zip file and that's gonna save it to my computer in my downloads, um, wherever yours automatically save, you'll find them. So I put them into a folder and uh, here we're just looking at the instruction sheet. They give you really detailed instructions about applique and what you need for your project in case you haven't done any before. And then you've got a getting started with applique. So really lots of resources. Then I'm going to open the folder with the pattern layouts, so there's mirrored or the regular pattern and um, you can put it on either way if you're if you were cutting these with some uh, you could cut them with vinyl iron on and then you might want to mirror it um, and depending just how you want to lay the file on it didn't really matter to me which way it was mirrored or unmirrored when I put mine on this is going to show you the exact pattern pieces and uh, it has different colors there if you want to use that so we've got those and what we're going to do is open design space we are going to upload the SVG file. This is very simple. So we're going to click on upload. This is on my PC. And so we can either click browse or we can drag and drop. So I'm just going to click on that pattern. I'm going to pull it over. It automatically inserts it into the upload screen. I'm going to put in some tags. So if I'm looking for this, I can find it and I'm going to save it. And you can see it, that's all there is to it. So then we're going to insert our mirrored pattern in case we ever want to have a specific mirrored pattern. It's really easy as well to mirror your pattern when you're in, uh, when you're cutting your materials. So whichever, you, you can have them both or just have one. And so when I get those uploaded, I'm choosing one of them and I'm inserting. And really that's all there is to it. Now, there is a little bit of a difference between your PC and your uh, iOS device. So I've inserted this from my PC and you can see it comes with all the colors and I saved it. Now here I'm opening the project on my iOS device. So this is on my iPad in Design Space in the app. When I bring it in from that saved project, all the colors are there. And you can see I'm just uh, in the layers panel right now and it shows me exactly what shapes and what colors are going to cut if I didn't change anything. And this is the sync um, menu right here. And I don't quite want this many colors. I'm gonna be using some Cricut felt, and so I am going to show you how easily it is to change the colors. And so I'm just scrolling through to show you if you only, if you wanted to use exactly the colors that the file came in as, uh, this is what it would be. And I think there was 18 different colors, so I really wanted to change that. So to change it, you're going to click on the shape you want to change, so I clicked on the large flower, then uh, I wanted to change it to a purple. So I clicked on purple and said apply. And honestly, that's all there is to it. You're just gonna go through all your shapes, click on the shape, click on the color, 
say apply. And remember, this isn't going to print out, so it's not going to be this exact color. This is more just so you're sorting them onto your mats um, for reference so that you know which color you're going to grab. You can cut this with fabric or, like I said, um, iron-on or um, felt like I'm doing. I'm going to use my rotary blade and my fabric mat with the felt. You can also open the sink folder and you can pull the shapes to the specific colors you wanted to change them to. So that's also an option. So a lot of times there's different ways to do each different thing. Now I've changed all my colors and I'm here they are in the sink folder and I noticed there's one little yellow flower which I didn't really pay attention to what that was. And what that actually is, is behind the pink circle, there's a yellow flower that should be layered in there, but I just didn't realize it. And so I'm gonna send it to the maker, send it to the machine to cut. This is my six colors now. I've got six different mats and the Images are all organized there, how they're going to cut. You could even cut this with paper and make a beautiful card to coordinate. So I'm saving it as a different file name just because I changed the colors and I wanted to keep this one and the other file. Now I'm going to show you how you can put this file in your iPad app in Design Space instead of adding it from a saved file that you added on your PC. So when we search for our file and we insert it into our project, it comes in as just one color. So this would all print on one mat. So what you want to do is change your colors exactly the same way as we changed the colors in the first mat so that um, they weren't in 18 different colors. Now we're just adding our own colors in. So. I'm not exactly sure why it doesn't come in as the color if you add it from the app, but you're probably going to want to change the color anyway, so it's very quick. So all I'm doing here is showing you, you click on the image, and for some reason it doesn't, the apply isn't highlighted until you click on something else and then click back. So you can either change your color or you can keep it the same color just by going in to edit and uh, changing the color, clicking on a different color, clicking back. It's really very simple. Just for some reason, it comes in as all one color. Now here you can see this little flower was tucked in behind and we want it to show this time. So I'm clicking on the circle, the large circle, then I'm clicking on edit, arranging it and I'm sending it to the back and then we can see that image. So you'll see I didn't end up adding the flower shape that's inside that circle uh, because I cut the small circle and the flower both in yellow and my daughter snagged the flower shape and felt that she should have it. So I gave that to her for her project and I just made a circle flower which I still like. So here we have our fabric mat, and uh, if you need more instructions about how to cut fabric or felt with your mat and your rotary cutter, there is tons and tons of tutorials online. And here is the felt. I'm using the Summer Sky Sampler. And this is just a fairly thin felt. I really liked the way that it cut. So I just added it to my mat. You can see I've got the yellow showing. I added the yellow felt. I'm choosing the maker because that's what I want to cut on and just following the instructions. And again, if you have a maker and you haven't uh, learned some basic steps, uh, be sure to check out some Facebook groups and uh, Google some YouTube videos because there is a lot of amazing instructions. So I'm choosing felt and then in my tools I could use 
the uh, fine blade with a regular mat, but I'm choosing to use the rotary blade and the fabric mat. And again, I'm really happy with how this cut. So here's my daughter helping me to uh, cut the material and she's inserting the mat. I am so happy with this Cricut Maker. We've cut lots of things on it. The kids have had lots of fun on it and it is really easy enough for them to help out as well. So it just goes back and forth. It's checking the blade, making sure we've got the right blade in there that we chose and then it's just gonna cut. So it cuts so much more quickly than if you were to trace a pattern, um, put it on some tracing paper or pattern paper, then pin it onto your uh, material and then cut it out by hand. It's just amazing how much quicker this is. You insert the file into your design space and basically put the colors the way you want and then you save that and you can do that anytime. So you can cut that anytime. Um, and it cuts it perfectly. So I was really happy with how this turned out. And here I'm peeling away and you have to just be careful not to touch this fabric mat too much. And there's our images. So we're gonna just pull off the little circle and you can see how perfectly that cut and I will totally be doing this more and then we go ahead and add our next color on there and I'm just using a brayer to flatten it down to make sure it stays but it's stuck well and here's our next piece and that little circle there that there was a teeny tiny spot that didn't cut that was the only spot of all the felt pieces that I just had to take my scissors and trim. And it was only, only took a second. I think maybe the felt may have moved or something, but that was it. Everything else cut out perfectly. And then I have all my shapes. So now once you get them all cut out, you have the colors that you want, you can start laying them out. So I'm just using the image in design space to uh, guide me to lay them out but again you have the pdf instructions if you wanted to print them from the file from so sweet p you could certainly do that and position that exactly the way they have it um, i wasn't too worried about it i just wanted to get it on there generally the same so i'm just laying this down And it's really just like a little puzzle piece. I love the look of these flowers. They are so pretty. And I'm using a piece of 12 by 12 canvas for the background. And I'm just taking a little bit of tacky glue and just to hold these down because I know I'm going to stitch it by hand. And I'm sure there are tons of different ways to applique and there are many ways um, in those PDF instructions that you can look at. And this was kind of just the quickest and easiest way for me to do it. So they're just tacked down lightly and I'm going ahead and grabbing some embroidery floss. So we have a box of this floss that um, somebody gave us a whole bunch of floss one time and the girls use it for bracelets and I use it on cards uh, but it was perfect for just grabbing uh, some to start some stitching so I'm it's a six strand floss and I separated it into two so I'm just taking my needle and around the edge I'm doing a running stitch there's lots of other stitches that you can find. Um, there's more information again in those PDFs. There's lots of files on the So Sweet Pea website, or you could just take your sewing machine and sew around it. I really enjoy hand stitching, and so this was really fun just to take with me. Um, I took it when my daughter was had her swimming lessons and just relaxed and did some stitching and didn't really worry about it. I liked the hand stitch look of it. 
And there's a look at everything completed. I did a few different types of stitching around and just really had fun with it. So I'll link below the So Sweet Pea website. You can get this file uh, free, I believe, with their newsletter subscription, but I'll put that information below. I'd love for you to like and subscribe. Have a great day.